Welcome to Montana SHPO's consultation website. In this guidance, we will describe a four-step cultural resources consulting process used in meeting requirements of both state and federal law. These four steps are 1. Defining the undertaking or the action and identifying the area of potential effect. 2. Identifying and reporting on historic properties within the area of potential effect. 3. Assessing effects to those properties. And 4. Resolving any adverse effects. You will find a link below to each step and sub-steps, as well as an acronyms and definitions section, a quick answers to most common questions section, and several appendices with contact information and interactive forms. The website is designed to allow you to enter at any step or to scroll forward or backwards depending on your interests. The four-step process originates in the implementation and regulations for the National Historic Preservation Act. In 1966, Congress recognized that many federal actions resulted in loss of historic places and enacted the National Historic Preservation Act. Examples included dam construction, urban renewal, and interstate highway projects. The Preservation Act mandated the consideration of an undertaking's effects take place as part of early planning. Consideration of historic properties moved beyond historic battlefields, famous mansions, or national parks to include lesser known but equally important cultural and archaeological resources as well. The Act created State Historic Preservation Offices, or SHPOs, as balances to the agency decision-making processes and to facilitate state and local input into federal actions. The National Historic Preservation Act's Section 106 requires federal agencies to follow the four steps in consideration of historic properties. People therefore often call the process Section 106. Section 106 applies when two thresholds are met. One, there is a federal or federally licensed action, like a grant, permit, or project, and two, that action has the potential to affect historic properties listed in or eligible for listing in the National Register of Historic Places. The Montana SHPO has adapted the four-step process to the relevant state law although there are some basic differences between Section 106 and the Montana State Antiquities Act. The Montana State Antiquities Act applies when a project occurs on state-owned lands and may have the potential to affect state-owned heritage properties. Historic properties include districts, sites, structures, and buildings, as well as linear features such as trails, roads, and railroads, which are 50 or more years old. Archaeological sites are evidence of past human occupation and behaviors that may include both historic and pre-contact material, cultural remnants, or features. Traditional cultural properties refer to places important to continuing significant historic traditions. If the property has been listed or is eligible for listing in the National Register of Historic Places or as a state heritage property, the four-step process applies. We hope this introduction was helpful. Thanks for listening and feel free to contact our office with any questions.